so hello everyone uh, welcome to this uh, new video so in this video we are going to discuss with uh, one important concept related to the body effect okay so till now we have discussed all the logic circuits so everything is over okay so first we had started with uh, complementary cmos logic then we have seen pseudo nmos logic then uh, dynamic cmos logic under that we have seen four phase and two phase dynamic logic then clocked cmos logic cvsl logic and in the previous video we have seen with the pass transistor logic okay so these were the logical circuits uh, which are which were uh, included in your syllabus okay all of them i have discussed with the uh, advantages disadvantages limitations applications everything so go through it those who have not watched those videos so we have left with only few concepts now from module 4 let us uh, finish it now first is related to the body effect body effect refers to the modification of the threshold voltage that is vt due to the voltage difference between source and the substrate okay so specifically the threshold voltage variation can be expressed as delta vt is equal to gamma into square root of uh, square root of uh, uh, i divided by vsp okay where uh, gamma uh, the delta vt is the change in the threshold voltage vsb is a source to body voltage and proportionality constant that is uh, this is called as uh, gamma is the proportionality constant which depends on the fabrication process okay so let us see the impact of this body effect in the nand gates okay how the how this body effect would be getting impacted in the nand gates in a multi input nand gate that is if you have a uh, if you consider some one n input nand gate in this figure they have considered four input nand gate okay the nmos transistor at the output switches slower if its source potential is not the same as the substrate okay figure below illustrates such a scenario you see here uh, the in the nmos uh, transistor according to that body effect uh, the in the pull up part the pmos transistors would be uh, fetched back to the vdd and in the nmos transistors the uh, uh, all the body terminals are fetched back to the ground okay so you see here consider the situation below here you see here capacitive charging effect in uh, body effect you see here we have four inputs a b c d and this is the uh, voltage that uh, is responsible for charging so you see here when c1 is charged all the inputs are on and this fourth input would be getting toggled because you see here in the connection this is between the uh, pull up and pull down part and from this d the output is taking place so that's why the toggling condition is taking place in the d terminal but in a b c the charging would be taking place and all the inputs are on but you take the discharging condition of node since the fourth input is getting toggled since it, it is not constant and it does not uh, have any relation with the first three inputs the node has to dis discharge at this point but the discharging won't be happening because we have the sudden change in the input in the uh, d terminal okay so that's why the node has to dis discharge but the discharging won't be happening uh, taking place here you see here there is one delay here we we don't have a straight line here so that's why this is the one important uh, capacitive charging effect in the body effect okay initially in most transistors a b and c are off that is vgsa equal to vgsb equal to vgsc that's equal to zero the nmos transistor d is turned on which causing on the vgsd equal to vdd when transistor d is switched off that is when this d is off we don't have any toggling signal taking place but uh, the output we won't be getting any output because this is directly given to the output so that's why this should be on it should be on always it should be on okay but when the transistor is switched off the internal node capacitance c1 would be getting charged leading to the non zero vsb output okay but if all inputs are driven high that is if vgsa equal to vgsv equal to vgsc equal to vdd the source of the transistor d will be at vdd minus vt the fault time of the gate output will be slower than expected due to its inter uh, internal charge build up okay so this is the body effect problem now how to minimize this body effect they mentioned it here to reduce body effect and improve the circuit speed the following strategies uh, should be used first is minimize the internal node capacitance to reduce parasitic charging effects consider the relative impact of body effect in nmos and pmos transistors if nmos body effect is worse use nor structures instead of nand may be preferable okay since nmos body effect is not so essential Uh, in order to minimize you could be using uh, here you have used nand nand structure right 
instead of NAND, you could be using NOT structure so that the complete structure would be getting uh, shifted. Here in the pull down part, all the transistors were in series. In the in the in case of NOR gate, it would be in parallel, and here it would be in series, uh, resulting that uh, since the series connection, the output would be directly fetched back to VDD, so that we won't be we won't be having any uh, voltage switch, uh, voltage switch problem. Okay. Optimization techniques. Then, uh, since body effect is a dynamic issue related to parasitic capacitances, two optimization techniques can be applied. One is optimized transistor placement. Place transistors with the late arriving signals closest to the output. Early arriving signals discharge internal nodes, reducing body effect for transistor switching later. Okay. Next is minimizing the internal node capacitance. Under that, we are you we use metal interconnects instead of diffusion wires for internal node connections. If buried contacts are allowed, use polysilicon instead of diffusion for interconnects. Minimize the diffusion area attached to transistors to reduce the parasitic capacitance. So these two techniques uh, are often used for optimization purpose for the signal to have a, a proper flow. Since in the some signals are uh, the signals are completely time dependent, right? So that's why the signals in order to uh, be time independent, the later arriving signals. Uh, due, due to the placement of the transistor, some signals would be arriving late, right? So that in order to avoid that situation, these two techniques are used. Okay, that is optimized transistor placement. Transistors should be placed such a way that uh, they should be kept near near so that the signals would be arriving at time. Okay, so these were the two techniques of the optimization for body effect. So yeah, that's all guys. So these were the body effect uh, conclusions which we have come through. So we have seen the impact on NAND gates, the body effect. So that's all for the video guys uh, under body effect. So we'll see you, we'll see you in the next video with one more important concept related to the uh, physical layout using the Euler path method. Okay. So let us see that in the next video, like, share, subscribe to our channel. Keep supporting. Thank you.